welcome to MOOC on Human Rights in India. In this module, we will take up the role of academic institutions and trade unions in the protection of human rights. What are the learning objectives for this module? Specifically, we will see what is the role of academic institutions in the task of protection and promotion of human rights and we will also see how trade unions advance human rights. In the very first module, I have explained to you the working of the National Human Rights Protection System where the three wings of the state, legislative, executive, judiciary have a role in the task of protection and promotion of human rights and at the one end of this system is the civil society. In fact, uh, the media, the non-governmental organizations, the trade unions and the academic institutions are all part of a uh, civil society and this civil society complements the work of the other three wings of the state with regard to the protection and promotion of human rights. Now, let us first take up the academic institutions. Universities have social responsibility to the communities in which they are situated. In fact, the university's social responsibility on the lines of corporate social responsibility requires the universities to have a sustained community engagement. And if you look at trade unions, it has been recognized now that workers' rights are human rights and there are any number of standards that have been evolved under the aegis of the International Labour Organization and the trade unions have a role in the prevention of exploitation of workers. The higher educational institutions uh, have basically a responsibility for teaching, for research and for documentation. Let's see how they have advanced the task of uh, human rights. Today, in the international human rights law, there are several human rights treaties which are monitored by what are known as treaty monitoring bodies. And countries which sign and ratify these treaties are required to submit periodic reports to the treaty monitoring bodies. The universities, by virtue of being in the forefront of knowledge creation, being in the forefront of research, can feed into the treaty monitoring process in several ways. They can contribute to the state party reports by providing inputs to the states while they are preparing detailed reports to the treaty monitoring body. On the other hand, they can also submit shadow reports, alternate reports by presenting the ground realities which the state might gloss over. So if you look at the, there are many examples, for instance, Nalsar University of Law submitted a shadow report to the Committee on the Rights of the Child, which monitors the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. Similarly, the Columbia-based, the Columbia University-based Center for Human Rights has submitted a shadow report to the Human Rights Committee which monitors the implementation of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights of 1966. In fact, this shadow report 
highlighted how millions of people in US are deprived of legal representation on matters like deportation foreclosure and many other issues and again in the same year 2014 the international human rights clinic at harvard university submitted a shadow report to the committee on torture which monitors the international convention on the torture cruel inhuman degrading treatment or punishment and in fact it has highlighted a number of serious human rights violations which were taking place as a part of the us war on terror and as a part of the uh, uh, conditions uh, in which detainees have been held at uh, guantanamo bay many universities have established human rights clinics or legal aid clinics which undertake a range of interventions if you look at the international experience um, the human rights clinic at harvard has often intervened in cases in the courts within us or advocated before of the inter-american commission on human rights or inter-american court of human rights on important matters and also submitted amicus curiae briefs before the court as far as our own country is concerned there are legal aid clinics which have been established by many uh, uh, law schools many uh, universities within india and they uh, students uh, as a part of their study program uh, often work at the grassroots level identify violations and also help people uh, take recourse to the mechanisms that are available uh, through legal interventions or filing of rti petitions they involve uh, in a range of matters like right to food right to education right to health and so on and so forth let me give you some examples of the work that is being done by the center for human rights studies at op general global university this center engaged with the non governmental organizations working in the field of human rights and organized several colloquia for the judges or for the chairperson members and senior officials of the national human rights institutions in northern india and it has also uh, um, organized a range of interventions i would like to mention one specific one there were extra judicial execution in the state of manipur with the lower 1500 of them and in fact the victims of those extra judicial executions that is the wives of those who got killed organized themselves into a non governmental organization called extra judicial execution victims families and they moved the supreme court of india and here uh, uh, the students as a part of the human rights clinic or as a part of the center for human rights studies visited manipur painstakingly documented each of these cases and gave this information to the amicus curiae and which has uh, helped the court uh, in many ways and these proceedings are still continuing and the supreme court has ordered uh, uh, investigation by cbi into a select cases and the process is still continuing national law school bangalore has established a chair professor on human rights uh, which was uh, with the funding given by the national human rights commission it has also established a chair professor in refugees uh, with the funding received from the un high commissioner for refugees and these chairs undertake a series of activities for the protection and promotion of human rights and if you look at uh, 
uh, many other universities um, there are interesting examples by way of establishment of research centers which work in the field of children and law field of gender justice or uh, um, in other uh, important uh, fields like you know uh, social exclusion let me take you to another important aspect of training in fact the universities have a role in capacity building of um, various stakeholders the chindal global law school and the institute of criminology at the university of cambridge partnered and trained the indian police officers of the rank of uh, igs and digs uh, as a part of the their mid career phase 4 training program and this unique partnership of cambridge jindal universities has led to the training of 500 senior police officers from the ips over a 8 week program with 6 weeks in uh, national police academy um, hyderabad and 2 weeks in cambridge and uh, in the ba- in over a course of 5 batches of 100 each and 500 officers were trained this is a unique partnership and this is a uh, police officers have been given training on a range of issues uh, including evidence based policing etc and there are other universities also um, regularly uh, undertake training programs uh, in um, field of uh, human rights in field of law universities also have a role in research i will give you an instance of a research project undertaken by the National Law University Delhi and National Legal Aid Services Authority NALSA together on the prisoners who have been sentenced to death and this unique project did a in-depth study of the interface between the death row convicts and the criminal justice system and in particularly the working of the legal aid system and the uh, difficulties in accessing legal aid and has come out with some wonderful reports after interviewing many prisoners across several states and in addition to prisoners or death row convicts the their family members and lawyers were also interviewed and this empirical research on death row convicts uh, spanning several states had come out with uh, many interesting findings and these examples can be multiplied and there are interesting research studies undertaken by other universities as well on aspects relating to human rights and the universities also have power to build coalitions across the world uh, across different countries for instance there is a universities united against death penalty is a network based in the university of oslo and all like minded professors across the world working in different universities join forces and advocate for the abolition of death penalty and there is one more example i wish to narrate is this a global alliance for justice education which tries to streamline the legal clinics and also the community engagement aspects of these legal clinics now let us turn our attention to the role of the trade unions in protection and promotion of human rights. The moment you recognize that workers' rights are human rights, the moment you recognize that um, workers have faced exploitation at times uh, through practices which are uh, um, which border on the what you call uh, profit motive here i want to narrate one 
anecdote or an important intervention made by a trade union called Hind Mazdoor Sabha in Ratla. Uh, the Hind Mazdoor Sabha noticed that uh, the railway colonies, Ratlam railway station, the people working there, the trains, all source their water from a river called Kurel and following the establishment of a alcohol plant in close proximity and at the release of untreated effluents by that alcohol plant has affected the river water so badly and the trade union that is the Hind Mazdur Sabha drew public attention to this problem, agitated, advocated and as a result um, steps have been taken, directions have been given to that alcohol plant not to release untreated effluents and whenever the rain occurred all these treated uh, all these uh, effluents were mixed with the river Kurel and affected the local population and here the trade union by virtue of its community mobilization by virtue of spreading awareness and by virtue of uh, advocating collectively ensured that the workers health workers rights were protected and that the river water pollution is prevented and that the workers had access to clean drinking water. Trade unions also have a role in reducing gender inequality by promoting uh, greater participation of women in the workforce and also in leadership positions. In addition, trade unions have a role in addressing child labor by identifying child laborers and by ensuring that they are removed from the workplace and to, so that they can pursue their education. Millions of workers across the world have no direct participation, no social protection and as a result face exploitation from by their contractors, by those who try and maximize profit. Through trade unionism, they organize collectively and then they demand protection of their rights and improvement of their living and working conditions. In fact, International Labor Organization has emphasized the need for decent work as and adopted a number of standards guaranteeing the workers' rights, but it requires a vigilant trade union movement to ensure that these workers' rights become a reality. Thank you and see you in the next module.